bien. Off the west coast of North America, our rich waters are a globally important destination for some of the ocean's most amazing species. I knew this as a lucky girl growing up here. I love the sound of the sea lions barking and how on beach days I might spot dolphins offshore. When I had the chance to go whale watching, we would see incredible things. Like the goofy ocean sunfish, which is so slow swimming, it's practically a jellyfish floating with the current. By far the most memorable encounter was with blue whales. Several of them swam past our vessel and started feeding off the bow. Even the tour guides were stunned by this spectacular display. It may not surprise you that I wanted to become a marine scientist when I grew up. Typical, right? And when I found out how these animals face threats like dangerous fishing gear, I was motivated to do just that. Now I get to work with an incredible global team fighting to protect and restore ocean abundance and sustain ocean livelihoods. I'm here today to tell you a story about how science and technology can help save our iconic species and create a more sustainable relationship with the ocean. Whales, sharks, and turtles migrate to California's waters from all across the Pacific Ocean. We have gray whales, which have one of the longest migrations of any whale, from Alaska to Mexico. We have the Pacific leatherback sea turtle, which has the longest migration of any reptile, all the way from nesting beaches in Indonesia. Sadly, it's also one of the most critically endangered species in US waters. We have the highest measured density of dolphins on Earth. The whale watching and other industries depend on these migrations, and we have a productive fishing industry taking advantage of all of the abundance. Every day, another migration takes place, an almost unknown one, but it's massive and it's vertical. Fish, squid, and plankton spend nighttime at the surface of the ocean feeding. By day, they descend up to 1,000 meters deep to hide in the safety of darkness. Humans are particularly interested in one of these migrants. Swordfish follow their prey and the darkness, and they're an important species for commercial and recreational fishers. For years, fishers have caught swordfish by setting long nets across the surface of the ocean at night. They're called drift gill nets. Unfortunately, these nets also catch all the other large animals. For this reason, they've been banned in many places in the US and around the world. Our government puts fisheries observers on some of the boats to count what they catch and document what they throw back, often dead or dying. We looked at the data. We found that the drift gillnet fishery throws back more than it keeps. This is what a short fin pilot whale is supposed to look like. Highly social creatures that live in groups that remain stable for generations. Here's a photo an observer took of one that's been drowned in a drift gill net. I could show you more such painful photos, but I'll spare you. Suffice to say, the California swordfish drift gill net fishery has killed dozens of large whales and endangered sea turtles. Hundreds of dolphins, sea lions, sharks, sportfish like marlin, and even the poor sunfish. We tried to solve the problem with better rules and regulations, but the deaths continued because the problem was the gear itself. The only way to end this was to stop the use of these walls of death. How do you eliminate an entire category of fishing gear? Regulators insisted that we offer fishers an alternative, but we didn't want to make the mistake of replacing them with something just as bad. So 
we went back to the science. Drift gill nets target swordfish at the surface at night, but tagging studies show where swordfish dive by day. If there was a way to target swordfish at depth, fishers could catch swordfish without killing anything else. Our team of Oceana scientists worked for years with fishers, engineers, gear manufacturers, fishery managers, enforcement, philanthropists, and other conservation groups to come up with a viable alternative. And together, we found a solution. A whole new method of swordfish fishing. Deep set buoy gear targets swordfish at depth, away from other animals that could easily be caught. It doesn't kill everything in its path. It's actively tended by fishers who reel in their catch as they get them. So unwanted catch can be thrown back alive. And not to mention the swordfish are of better quality and sell for a higher price. To date, no marine mammals or turtles have been killed by the gear and 98% of the catch is marketable. It's profitable for fishers, and it's rated a best choice by the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch program. With the viable alternative, we went back to the lawmakers and worked with them to end drift gill nets. We set up a net buyback fund to compensate fishers most of the fishers accepted a voluntary buyout and surrendered their permits. They turned in 54 tons worth of nets. If you strung them together, they'd be 50 miles long. And now they can be recycled into sunglasses and skateboards. And by 2027, all the remaining nets will be out of the water forever. Fishers can keep catching swordfish, and the oceans are a safer place for all the marine wildlife I fell in love with as a kid. We have a promising, clean, new technology that could be a model for swordfish fisheries around the world. We also have a model for how we can improve other fishing gears, for how science, innovation, and smart regulation can create a more sustainable relationship with the ocean and the resources we depend on. So, what's next? The Dungeness crab fishery still relies on conventional traps. The traps set on the seafloor and connected to the surface by vertical line, posing a hazard for migrating animals. Humpback and blue whales in particular are still threatened by entanglement, and the effort to stop this has involved major fisheries closures. We're working on a range of solutions, including developing a new type of gear for crab fishing. It's called pop-up gear. Also known as ropeless gear, the rope is sunk to the seafloor along with the trap, where it can't entangle other animals. When the fish is ready to harvest their catch, they use an acoustic signal to summon the rope. The coil unwinds, and the fisher can pull up their trap. Fishers are already successfully using the gear under experimental permits. And thanks to our experience with deep set buoy gear, we have a pathway to authorizing and scaling up the gear, eliminating lines that cause entanglement while reopening lost fishing opportunities. I'm excited by the promise of these two fisheries transformations, by the hope that we can protect the species I fell in love with as a kid, not just so I and we all, can continue to admire them for the rest of our lives. But so we can apply the lessons we've learned here to other fisheries. So the oceans themselves can be healthy and abundant. So we can realize the promise of fisheries that sustainably support human livelihoods now and into the future. And of course, I will be watching. <laughs> Thank you.